Hi, you may have seen my previous insight video on foundations and trees. Today, we are going to look at a follow-up, the foundations and drainage. Although I will talk today mainly in relation to domestic extensions, all that I am saying may also apply to new buildings and irrespective of whether they are domestic or commercial. Why is it important to consider existing drainage, particularly when building an extension? Essentially two reasons. One, if using a traditional strip or deep strip foundations, these must not impose loads on the existing drainage. And two, it's likely that this drain may now be classed as a public sewer, meaning that you should enter into a build over agreement with your local water company. This may require certain design and construction measures in relation to the extension. In a few cases, this may even prevent the extension from going ahead. I'll talk about build over agreements later. One of the first steps you should take when planning your project is to try and work out where all of your existing foul and rainwater below ground drainage is actually going. How does it leave your house and which inspection chambers does it go through? You should lift the inspection chamber lids in your garden or even inside your property if you have any. If you don't have any, ask your neighbours if you can have a look on their property and then do the same. Beware, if they are foul drains, then they will almost certainly be quite smelly, but doing this can pay off. You'll want to look at the drain depth, size and direction to see how it might interact with your proposed foundation layout. You should try and figure this out before you start work. New strip or deep strip foundations must be dug down to the invert level of any drains that pass through or beneath the line of the foundation trenches, or even possibly if they are close by. The invert level is the bottom of the pipe. Digging down to this level means the foundation will not impose a load on the pipe. Say, for example, the ground is generally satisfactory at one meter deep for your proposed foundation but there is a drainage pipe lower than this. A stepped excavation is the usual way of digging down to the invert level. It's also worth bearing in mind that although the ground may look okay, if there's a drainage pipe at a lower depth, then someone has already dug that ground out once and backfilled it. We should always look for firm virgin ground for strip or deep strip foundations. There is good guidance on how to construct foundation steps in diagram 21 of approved document A. Basically, the horizontal overlap should not be less than one metre or twice the depth of the foundation concrete, whichever is greater. Before pouring any concrete, it will be necessary to shutter off either side of the drainage so that none of the new concrete touches the pipe. This is done to allow for settlement of the new building. Once the concrete has been poured and has gone off, it is then usual for concrete lintels to bridge the gap over the pipe and between the different portions of the foundation. Here's a typical scenario. This existing drain cuts through the new foundation excavation. It needs shuttering off to both sides and then the concrete can be poured. Other potential options include casting a continuous section of pipe within the foundation concrete and then creating a rocker pipe either side. This is basically a short length of pipe that will allow the foundation to settle. In domestic situations we see very little of this, usually most people choose to shutter off and use lintels. It's important to say these options really only apply where the drainage pipe passes through the foundation laterally. A less common situation is where the drainage pipe runs along the length of the foundation, and this is more of a problem. Options then include moving one of the walls, either in or out, or rerouting the drainage pipe. Alternative foundation designs are also possible, such as a raft or possibly a cantilevered design, but either of these would need designing by a structural engineer. If there are any other properties upstream of your drain, then it's likely that this drain is now classed as a public sewer. If building works take place directly over or within three metres of any public sewer, then you should talk to your local water company well before you start the works. 
Your local water company is just whoever you'll pay your water rates to. For around 10 years now, drainage pipes that serve multiple users, previously classed as private drains, are now often classed as public sewers. The upside to this is that the responsibility for the repair and upkeep is transferred to the public ownership of the water company. The downside is that you cannot just go straight ahead and build over or within three metres of a public sewer. This is where the build over agreements come in. Without one, if something happens to that public sewer that you've built an extension over, the water company has a right to come and gain entry to fix the problem, even if it means demolition of the extension. If a build over agreement has been entered into, then the water company no longer has the right to demolish the structure over the sewer. But as part of the build process, they may impose conditions as to how that is to go ahead. A typical one being that the sewer beneath the extension must be relayed. I'm not going to talk in depth about the technical requirements that your water company may impose in agreeing to a build over agreement, as these do differ around the country. If you do a Google search of the name of your water company plus build over, you should easily find their online advice pages. As a building control body, we usually consult with the water company, but in the case of most public sewers, it rarely throws up any useful information. Water companies do keep sewer maps, but because of the rule change around 10 years ago, those maps don't take account of the vast majority of what are now classed as public sewers. As with problems with trees, it's worth finding out as much as you can about the drainage situation in your property before you start the works. That way you can avoid unexpected costs or disappointments. This and the previous video could have been titled Things that may cost you extra money if you don't think about them beforehand and because they are underground no one will ever see what the extra money has been spent on. Parts 1 and 2. But that's a mouthful. Hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Any questions get in touch via the number that's on the screen now. Thanks for watching.